So anonymous automation. I got a bunch of different CSVs that they're going to come to me with the same name always. So it's some sort of a mobile app that has a bunch of forms in it. And when it um, when they when they get the data sent in, it's always called temp.csv, and it'll have a bunch of different columns or fields in there. Um, but each one is different. So there's there's the temp. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And so the first thing I noticed was that the only way to tell really what CSV you have is that very leftmost column. If you notice mm. that thing is discharge, culvert, blah, blah, blah. That's a clue. If, if I have that value or that column there, if it exists, then I know what other fields I want. And so what did I do to, to win at this one? So what I did was, if I go into here, and let's grab, no, I mean the wrong one. I'm in anonymous this time. Anonymous, read many CSVs. And I go over here, look at this. No, I don't want to save that. And um, I generated, I went readers, add reader. And I, I went CSV, let's do CSV. And I said, I had a sample from our friend of all of these. Um, and I said, okay, let's generate from all of these, but let's use a single merged feature type. Ah. So that's going to go whoop and basically say, look, I'm going to give you the union of all possible fields. And so when I click this open, I see like a big, long, ugly, use, useless um, thing that's got everything possible in it. Now, one thing I noticed was that all of them have a field called lat underscore long, which is the point. So ahead of doing any magic, I'm going to actually make the point. So I first split the lat long by a comma, and then I make a vertex out of it. And, um, and then I set the coordinate system so that we know that it's lat long. So that's, that's kind of getting ready for all of them. I did notice that lots of them, the lat long is blank. Ooh. And so that will Ooh. be rejected when I go to this vertex counter. So I'm saying, look, I don't care if it succeeds or fails uh, because we're going to get the data anyway, mm -hmm. and I'll... Now, if, if uh, the customer cared, they could throw out the data that didn't have a lat long here. But I'll just collapse that. And then the trick was, how do I pick these apart? And I used a test filter here to say, look, if, if the culvert GPS point, that special one, is not missing, this is how I can say, does is it there? It's, it's sort of the opposite. Um, <laughs> so if it's not missing, yeah then I know that it's a culvert. And, and you do this basically for all 11. I've only done three of them, but that's how you can figure it out. And then what I did was, if I know it's a culvert, now I can go in here and uh, just keep only the attributes that are related to culvert from that point on. And then I have a much, now I've got stuff split out, and from here on, I could do whatever I wanted to do with culverts, mm -hmm. and I can do whatever I want to do with discharge from here, and so on. So that would be the technique. So again, mm -hmm. merge them all, figure out who I've got, keep the things I want. If I run this, um, I'm going to get a whole bunch of data that uh, comes rolling by. And um, yeah. So I think there's actually a way, I think you're not missing trick. I believe there's also a has value operator. So that might be a yes. nice way that's a little bit clean. A little, right. A little, yeah. Yes, it should. Uh, they both do the same thing. That's right, in those in those predicates. There might be other other ways. I think I know, because I think that was one of the. <laughs> Someone that you did, I, I think. I think I added that in there. Also. Yes. So that was that one. And again, I tested by, again, as Iris says, phrasing the test carefully. Yeah. And then filtering them to split out. Because it's a weird case where the input is coming, but we don't know what structure it's going to be until we start testing, and then we can impose structure ourselves.